Hello and welcome everyone to Variety Stick and we back again for another video and another new Metro by T-Mobile phone from Samsung this time around and I do have with me the Samsung Galaxy A11 so we're gonna be doing unboxing, first look and mini review without any further ado let's find out <music> Now, if you're buying the phone through Metro by T-Mobile, the only color available will be the black. For international, they have a variety of colors, and the price may be different from Metro and the international unlock version. Uh, the retail price of the phone will be around $129, so the phone is still affordable in the price. Uh, if you're wanting to buy the phone unlock, I will try to find the best actually deal and price on Amazon, and I will leave the link in the description box. Now, if you're buying the phone through Metro by T-Mobile, you guys are gonna expect different deals and the price will be different depends on how you buy the phone now if you switch your number from a different carrier like for instance boost mobile to metro by t-mobile you would get the phone for ten dollars if you switch your number over now if you switch more than one line you will get the phone for free now if you're a new customer you're not switching your number from a different carrier you can get the phone for $39.99 as a new activation now if you're already a customer with Metro by T-Mobile and you have your line more than 90 days and you want to add a second line you should get the phone for $10 only now if you're doing upgrade if you are qualified for upgrade through Metro by T-Mobile the phone won't cost you hundred and twenty nine US dollars but anyways I always recommend to contact your Metro by T-Mobile store and find out more about the price because the prices keep changing through Metro by T-Mobile now moving on the specifications starting with the screen we have relatively a big size screen 6.4 inches high definition plus means the resolution will be only 720p and the screens by the way IPS not OLED display as I said this for an affordable device this is a budget device not high end you guys not gonna expect the best specification for that phone now moving to the processor in this phone we're going to have this time around snapdragon not the helio p35 as we saw in the 821 so it will be snapdragon 450 2 gigabyte of ram and 32 gigabyte for internal storage and you have the option to add sd card now for the camera we'll have a triple camera and something nice to see a phone less than 150 comes with a triple camera we'll have main camera 8 megapixel we have 5 for ultra wide and we have depth sensor 2 megapixel to give you macro and portrait pictures now for the battery we'll have non-removable battery actually the size surprised me 4000 milliamp support fast charging with 15 watt with the c type that looks very promising for the operating system, the phone is going to run the latest operating system for the meantime, Android 10 with Samsung Touch UI. Now let's get to the unboxing. And the package, as you guys can see, very basic package over here. Nothing really fancy, branded with Samsung A11, Samsung Galaxy A11 from here. And this is actually just a tape over here. Uh, give you some warning and metro by t-mobile over here so let's go ahead open the box the first thing you will see will be actually the phone itself let's set the phone on the side and come back to it and then we will have the manual guide and we will have this envelope normally if you purchase the phone as international uh, variant you should get a phone case with it along with the headphone but if you buy the phone as a US model normally it doesn't come with accessories so that will be just the user guide and then we will have here actually the sim card and then you will have the fast charger 15 watt which is good in my opinion and we will have the C type cable and there will be nothing else in the box here where actually the headphone should go but as I said if you're purchasing the phone as international you guys gonna expect cheap headphone comes with the phone now moving back to the phone here's actually the phone I've seen this design before with the Samsung Galaxy A20 and the A21 from the front back to the camera on the corner now from the back we'll have actually jet black color over here it looks so shiny and very reflective and that seems to me is gonna get scratched so easily from my experience with the other uh, phones from Samsung it's a plastic easy to get scratched as well as the phone is 
very slippery in the hands so i highly recommend to get a phone case so that way you save your phone uh, the only difference between this phone and the a20 that seems to me will be the camera the a20 has a uh, dual camera and this has a triple camera if you guys want to see a speed test video make sure to subscribe to variety stick or not to miss that video i'll be comparing these two phones uh together other than that the phone feels actually good in the hands back to the curve over here which is quite nice. Now we will have a speaker, USB-C and microphone and we have the headphone jack from the top, another counseling microphone, fingerprint because the phone didn't have OLED display so Samsung they cannot put actually in screen fingerprint. Uh, now what we're gonna be doing actually we're gonna spend time with this phone and we're gonna come back to you with more information. A few moments later now after spending some time with the Galaxy A11, let me kick off with the design and the build construction. Now for the build construction, as I mentioned before, the phone made out of plastic, though the frame is a plastic and the back of the phone also is a plastic. I'm not really a big fan of this shiny uh, glossy look for the back because it easily pick up the fingerprint and it could get scratched so easily. So I highly recommend to get a phone case. Now the grip is nice and uh, Samsung they did a very good job, especially from the front adding actually a 6.4 uh, inches screen it's a huge size screen but you feel the phone is not big in a hand back to the 19 by 9 infinity display now since the Galaxy A11 affordable and a budget device you guys not gonna expect the phone to be water or dust proof also worth to mention that we have fingerprint located on the back and it actually works very accurate and very fast as you guys can see. I don't have any complaint about the fingerprint in this particular device. In addition to this we will have also face unlock through the front camera or we call it 2D face unlock which is depends on the camera. In my opinion I'm not actually big fan of the face unlock on the front facing camera because that's actually not secured. Now overall speaking about the design the phone is okay but in my opinion the phone feels cheap in the hands back to the plastic built construction. Now moving to the speaker, the speaker should locate on the bottom of the phone, well, this is where it actually fires and we will have another speaker just to perform phone calls so that's not a helper speaker so mainly the speaker is not my best or favorite location because it will be blocked easily if you're playing video games on the landscape mode and the quality of it actually it's a mono, it's about okay but it's not the best. Moving to the display of the phone, the size will be 6.4 as I mentioned before, it's IPS LCD, it's not OLED screen as we've seen on the A20, so the color and the contrast and the vividness is not going to be good as the OLED screen. Overall it's very acceptable, in my opinion I don't have so much complaint about it except the amount of PPI and that would be 260 now the resolution another actually a big flaw for this device because it's only 720p to 6.4 inches I feel that you need at least 1080p for that size of the screen also let's talk about the battery of the phone the size will be 4000 milliamp it will be stick to the back of the phone non removable in my opinion it's quite decent 4000 milliamp compared with the specs and the price of the phone is more than what I expect from phone within this range of price also the specs of the phone helps actually the battery to last longer we have 720p for the screen and we don't have actually powerful a processor and that's not going to make the phone consume a lot of juice you guys gonna expect phone like this will last you two days of heavy usage which is great in my opinion in addition to this 15 watts of fast charging you have the ability to charge the phone from 0% to 100% within only hour and 45 minutes. Now for the internal hardware the phone is powered by Snapdragon 450 with 2 GB of RAM 32 for internal storage and the option to add SD card up to 1 TB. Now Samsung they're trying to target people on budget, low income or people not willing to spend so much on the phone so they have used actually Snapdragon 450 which is 2 years old processor and you guys are not gonna expect the best performance especially for people looking for play high video games 
my experience overall with this phone was actually decent especially using the phone moving from app to another or play video games that's not require high graphics or high frame rate or high resolution like for instance asphalt 9 need for a speed no limit you should be fine but if you're looking forward to play games like uh, PUBG or fortnite that phone actually it's gonna struggle so you guys from the beginning you know if you're not paying so much for the phone you guys are not gonna expect the highest performance but for the price i would say the performance of the phone quite decent for the operating system, the phone came out of the box with Android 10 with One Touch UI 2.1. In my opinion, it's a good custom UI from Samsung. The software overall, uh, it's very simple, very easy to use and very fluid. I haven't noticed any problems or lags or whatsoever. Also, let me give you a deep look to how the UI is going to look if you're not familiar with the Samsung phones because this is going to be like any typical Samsung phones in general. As you guys can see, we will have app drawer and we have the application on the desktop and you have the option to bring any application games to the desktop and if we also go to these short toggles over here you will see some useful uh, applications and features we will have just a standard Wi-Fi sound Bluetooth and also we have a smart view that's where you can connect your phone to your TV which is always something nice to see from all Samsung phones quick share a blue light if you want to read a book in your cell phone night mode or dark mode available in this phone now the phone doesn't have NFC and if you are willing to do Samsung Pay or Android Pay, this phone is not going to support. Normally the phone is going to be loaded with a lot of Google applications, Metro and Samsung. And you have the Google Play Store. Also you have a Galaxy Store for more applications from Samsung. Google has all the Google Essentials uh, applications or the stock applications like the Map, the YouTube, Do, and the Google Photo and Google One. In addition to this, you will have also some Microsoft application like OneDrive, Office, LinkedIn. And also we have Metro, My Metro, and some Metro applications like My uh, Metro Play, Visual Voicemail, Name ID, and Mobile Hotspot, and uh, the application to unlock the phone. And if you go to the settings over here, we will see everything organized and categorized as any stock Android connection, sound vibration, notification, display, wallpaper, and uh, actually biometrics and security to set up the fingerprint, the face unlock, and Google account and some other option in the phone. Last but not least, we will talk about the camera on the phone. On the back of the phone will have three cameras. The main one will be 8 megapixel. This is a wide main sensor and we have also two additional camera. Uh, one's going to be for ultra wide which is 5 megapixel and two for depth sensor to help you to take portrait pictures. Now on the front we will have 8 megapixel camera. Now let's open the camera application and have a deeper look on the camera applications and the feature and the performance of the camera. If we look here, we're going to see a very basic uh, camera application and we have the option if we go to photo to choose between the ultra wide and the wide angle. In addition to this, we can also zoom in. If you go up to 2x zoom, that picture won't be cropped and you're going to maintain the quality of the picture. Also we have the option to take a uh, video and the video you can choose the ultra wide and regular wide with the option to get up to 1080p for the video so we don't have 4k we don't have slow motion or super slow motion. Now also we have a uh, live focus this is basically when you capture portrait pictures and you have a bar here you can adjust the amount of blurriness on the picture if you want. In addition to this, you, we have some actually uh, settings over here. You can add mask, you can actually add the flash, you can put timer, you can change the ratio. Now let's go ahead and move to the uh, pictures and the samples I took with the phone. And let's move on to the first picture. This is a selfie picture. I took it using the live focus. You guys are going to be able to see that picture pop on the screen with a larger size. And if you guys can see the background, actually, it looks so good. It looks so professional. So the selfie camera, in my opinion, does good uh, job. Let me show you another one I took without the live focus. And if you guys also can look to the background, you will see everything is sharp. So in my opinion, the 
front facing camera with this phone equal to high end uh, phones. I haven't noticed problem with it. Let's move on uh, to another uh, sample over here. So this picture actually uh, I try to take just a regular white picture and then I try to go with 2x zoom. Now as you guys can see this is basically the picture without uh, the zoom and this is with 2x zoom and as you guys can see we we maintain or the phone maintain good quality for both these pictures. Now this another uh, sample for uh, regular wide and this is the ultra wide and you guys can see how much details you can get in the same frame which is very nice in my opinion. Taking picture indoor with medium light also it seems to me pretty good and we also took another picture in the dark and the phone was actually able to take decent picture with little bit of noise the phone doesn't have the option where you can choose night mode and enhance the lightning and come up with good pictures this is another selfie with a portrait or life focus indoor also with medium light I was able to capture very nice pictures for a selfie and also I trying to do the same thing take a regular picture and wide picture indoor and it seems to me everything looks sharp everything is great and you guys are gonna be able to see uh, both pictures side to side that way you can see how much detail you can get from the ultra wide picture so overall speaking about the camera it's about good for phone uh, less than hundred and fifty dollars I won't expect a better camera than that camera now if you ask me to evaluate the A11 based on the price, 129 is not a lot, I will give this phone 8 out of 10. I mean the phone still offer good size screen 6.4 inches, the phone has good camera in my opinion, the phone has a great performance for the battery with a fast charging, in some points the phone doesn't have the best specs especially for the internal hardware 2GB and the Snapdragon 450 but you have to take the phone as one package. That was very much it for that video that was variety stick thank you so much everyone for watching if you like this video give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more hit the bell you'll be notified every time i post video in the future and i will talk to you in the next video and peace